Hi, the title of this video is pretty self-explanatory. This was a video I was hoping I wouldn't have to make, but the truth is a lot of common problems with analog synthesizers, things like regular wear and tear, are easily fixed, especially with Moog, if you have basic soldering skills. I'm going to show you how to replace a broken USB socket, but the process is very similar, if not identical, for replacing broken potentiometers and switches. So, let's get to it. I've marked the screws we need to remove to open the case with painter's tape. The screws in the depression are for attaching the key bed to the case. We'll leave those as they are for now. Alright, so there's 10 screws we have to remove in total. And uh, I know it's common sense, but I might as well bring it up. It's a good idea to put them in a Ziploc bag or something so you don't lose them. Okay, let's flip it over gently. And uh, we're going to take the case off now. All right, so you just slide it back. Now you have to be careful. There's ribbon cables attached right here. Not sure if this is coming through on the camera, so let's just reposition here. Okay. Uh, yeah, so these little ribbon cables are held back with clips. Uh, as long as you move it slowly, uh, you'll be okay. You just want to make sure you don't rip them out of the PCB. Here's the innards of the matriarch. Uh, the USB socket I need to replace is on this front PCB here. To replace the socket, I'll need to remove the PCB from the case. To do that, I'll first need to unplug this USB cable. It's in there pretty tight, but just pulls right out. Next, I'll have to remove this ribbon cable here, which is attached to the PCB with the ZIF connector. ZIF connectors have little tabs that you need to pull up to remove the cable. Sometimes they can be a real pain. This one's not that bad. Just pull it up, push the tab towards this back of the synth, and pull out the cable. There we go. Done. So now you can see it a little bit better. Um, here's that little tab. It just pulls forward. Uh, looking around the synth, I found my old USB socket that had fallen into the case, and it's lodged itself behind this PCB. When it fell off, I was afraid to turn the synth back on because I didn't want it to bridge any contacts and short the synth. But now I'm looking at it, and yeah, almost all the leads have been torn right off, probably from me pushing the USB cable in too hard. Moog sent me this one for $5. Good deal. Thank you, Moog. And yeah, you can see there's support arms as well as longer leads. Next step, we've got to remove some nuts and screws from the back of the matriarch. These uh, obviously attach the jacks to the PCB we need to remove. We only need to remove the keyboard, ARP, and MIDI connections. This is a pretty easy job this time. Lucky, uh, we only need access to the one PCB. Here's a tip. I like to put a painter's tape on the end of my socket wrench. That way I don't scratch the uh, metal when I'm removing the nuts. Oh, and for the... Uh, plastic nuts on the sus pedal and expression pedal inputs. You can probably just use your fingers. That way you're not going to break the plastic nut with um, metal pliers. Okay, just the MIDI connections left. You just screw it with a little jeweler screwdriver. Okay, now we've got to remove this uh, little screw here that's to the offset. And that's it. The PCB is free. It's still attached to the power, so I'm just going to gently pull it out and make sure I don't pull off these two cables here. All right, here's our power PCB. Sometimes Moog hides hidden art onto their PCBs. This one seems to be clean. Here's the connection for a USB socket. Zoom in, and yeah, you can see it's still filled with solder and old leads. We'll have to clean that. We'll get to that from the bottom there. Just clean out and remove all of the solder and these leads here. Okay. I don't want to remove the power cable, so I'm just going to grab a piece of foam for the PCB to sit on, and I'm just going to solder it right in place. To desolder, I'm going to use the good old XT-Tronics desoldering machine. It's got a vacuum built right in. Pretty cool. But uh, for the bigger blobs of solder, I'm going to use just this good old-fashioned solder pump. All right, to desolder, it's easy. All you got to do is get a nice hot soldering iron, touch it to the blob, let it melt. Should only take a few seconds, and vacuum it up. All right, we'll do that again. Get it all out. That's pretty good. Do the other big blob with the uh, pump. 
Now you might see there's a few little solder bits flying around. Make sure you clean all those up. You don't want to uh, bridge any connections. Just a few seconds. You don't want to burn the PCB. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to use the uh, desoldering iron. Clean it up a little bit and get these connections nice and clean. Okay. That looks pretty good. Those are pretty clean connections now. Now I've just got to get these little um, leads out here. We'll use the desoldering iron for that. Okay, got those out. Looks pretty good. This side's nice and clean too. Perfect. Ready to uh, solder now. I like to use Kester 245 solder. It's a no clean flux cord solder uh, with 63% lead, but there are other great solder brands out there. But the most important thing is that you use non conductive flux. Now we've got the uh, socket in place now, making sure it's as flush as possible and that the um, leads have gone through the connections and the support arms are keeping it steady. That looks pretty good. Yeah, it's flush and seems to be 90 degrees to the PCB. Yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is just solder one of the supports here first and then put it into the case to double check its positioning. Okay, so these little supports take quite a bit of solder. Still same sort of deal. Just uh, heat up the lead for about two or three seconds and then try to cover the entire solder pad with solder. Uh, the supports don't conduct any signals, but it is important that there's strong connections because it's what holds the socket in place. Okay, that's a nice shiny connection. So now before we do the other ones, let's put it back into the case and just double check the alignment. Don't want to do all this and then have to do it again if it's not sitting right. It looks pretty good. Yep, sitting nice and straight in its little hole. Great. Okay, so now I'm just going to solder the rest of the connections here, touching the lead as well as the solder pad. Just about two or three seconds. Done. Camera's a bit fuzzy if I zoom in, but I've got nice shiny connections and made sure I didn't bridge any connections with the solder. Time to put it all back together, starting with the nuts and screws on the back panel. Just loosely connect everything at first to make sure that we've got everything in its right spot and lined up. And I can tighten up with wrenches. Okay, pretty much done there. Now I've reattached the uh, offset screw here. Now I'm going to put the uh, USB, actually I'll start with the ribbon cable first, making sure that the blue side is facing out. If you look at the back you can see the impressions and how far you got to slip it down into the slot. Also got to make sure that the little tab is up and then just gently line it up and slip the cable into the connection. As mentioned, these are called ZIF connectors. ZIF stands for zero insertion force. I find you need a little bit more than zero, but you know you don't want to push too hard. Good, that seems good. And lock it in place. Done. Okay, attach the uh, USB. Back to the board here. Uh, Oops, I think I got it, yeah, backwards. There we go. All done. Let's clean up these ribbon cables now. And I'm just going to put these ribbon cables back into the little holders here and gently start sliding things back in place. The uh, enclosures real nice and solidly built. It's pretty heavy, so I just want to make sure I'm not catching any ribbon cables here in between the metal. Yeah, pack that a bit tighter. Okay. 
All right, we're in the home stretch now. Just flip it back over and screw the enclosure back together. I'm going to uh, just loosely tighten first, make sure everything's lined up. Then I'll go around again, make sure everything's nice and tight. All right, all done. Now we just got to check it. Power's on, nothing blew up. So far, so good. Got a USB cable plugged in. Let's see if it'll talk with my computer. It works. <laughs>